Welcome to Stoic in Your Life, where ancient wisdom illuminates modern friendships. Today we delve into a crucial topic. 12 Toxic Behaviors to Avoid in Friendships Choose your friends wisely, for they will shape your future, said the Stoic philosopher Seneca. In the realm of friendships, not all bonds are created equal. Some, unfortunately, can drain our spirit rather than enrich it. True wealth lies not in material possessions, but in the richness of our relationships. A genuine friend is a treasure, a source of emotional and spiritual abundance. Friendships, like gardens, require care and mutual nurturing. They thrive on a balance of giving and receiving. But what happens when this balance is lost? When one side takes without giving or when we give without being valued? Remember, at birth, we owe nothing to anyone except our parents. We are not bound to serve or support those who bring negativity into our lives. By allowing toxic individuals to remain in our circle, we invite chaos and lose our self-respect. So, let's embark on a journey of discernment. Together, we'll explore the 12 toxic behaviors that have no place in healthy friendships. It's time to reassess our connections and bravely press delete on those who bring us down. Join me in this enlightening exploration. And let's cultivate friendships that truly reflect the stoic values of respect, balance, and mutual growth. The type who likes to control or exploit others. You likely have a friend who seems genuinely caring. They know your preferences, surprise you with thoughtful gifts, and appear to be the epitome of a good friend. However, beneath this veneer of generosity, there's often a hidden agenda. This type of friend operates on the principle that nothing comes without a price. Accepting their gifts or favors, you might find yourself unwittingly trapped in a cycle of obligation. It's a classic case of no free lunch. Before you realize it, you're dancing to their tune, your autonomy slipping away as you transform into a mere puppet in their hands. Reflect on this. They gain a helper. But at what cost to you? Marcus Aurelius, a renowned Stoic philosopher, once said, Such as are your habitual thoughts, such also will be the character of your mind, for the soul is dyed by the thoughts. This quote resonates deeply in this context. If you constantly think you owe someone for their kindness, your mind starts believing it, losing its freedom and resilience. The Stoics emphasized living a life true to oneself not one that's manipulated by others. It's essential to recognize when a friendship stops being a mutual exchange of respect and support and starts becoming a tool for someone's control. The moment you sense this imbalance, it's time to question the value of such a relationship in your life. Ask yourself why hesitate to let go of a connection that costs you your peace and autonomy. Remember, true friends uplift and empower each other not bind and control. As Epictetus wisely stated, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. In friendships, this means listening not only to what is said but also to what is unsaid, the underlying intentions and the unspoken transactions. In conclusion, navigating friendships requires a delicate balance of generosity and discernment. It's about understanding when to give, when to receive, and most importantly, when to step back. As we continue on our stoic journey, let's strive to cultivate relationships that are enriching, equitable, and free from the shadows of control and exploitation. Remember, in the grand tapestry of life, each thread should add to your pattern, not unravel it. The criticizer disguised as a friend. In the realm of friendship, we cherish those brave enough to offer us the unvarnished truth dissecting the good and bad for our betterment. This is indeed a hallmark of true camaraderie. Yet, lurking in the shadows of this noble trait is a more insidious type of companion. This individual masquerades their penchant for criticism and contradiction as a means of improving you. Their modus operandi is not to uplift but to incessantly find fault, irrespective of the situation. Whether it's task A, B, or C, their critique is relentless, serving not to guide, but to pull you down while subtly elevating themselves. This behavior 
echoes the words of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, who wisely stated, It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Such friends, cloaked in the guise of wisdom, are often blind to their own shortcomings. Their criticism, rather than being constructive, becomes a tool for asserting dominance and superiority. It's a toxic trait, where their inability to tolerate others' success or happiness becomes glaringly evident. Engaging with this type of friend is akin to navigating a minefield. You are perpetually on edge, unsure of what will trigger their next bout of criticism. This constant state of unease and negativity can be draining, both mentally and emotionally. It's a relationship that offers little in the way of growth or genuine support. In such cases, it might be prudent to consider distancing oneself. As Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher, advised, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. By choosing to step away from such toxic dynamics, you not only protect your well-being, but also affirm your commitment to healthier, more uplifting relationships. In our modern lives, where stress and challenges abound, the value of supportive and constructive friendships cannot be overstated. It's essential to cultivate relationships that are rooted in mutual respect, understanding, and genuine care. Friends who challenge us to grow while offering support and encouragement are the ones who truly enrich our lives. As you navigate the complexities of friendships, remember to seek those who uplift rather than undermine, who offer light instead of casting shadows. In doing so, you not only enhance your own life, but also contribute positively to the lives of those around you. The type who likes to speak ill of others. In the realm of friendships, especially those formed in professional environments, it's crucial to be wary of the third toxic behavior, speaking ill of others. This trait is unfortunately not uncommon in workplaces. If you find your office devoid of such individuals, consider yourself fortunate. Picture this. A colleague who is outwardly friendly and engaging, someone who might even come across as charming. However, their demeanor can be misleading. The moment your back is turned, the same individual could be spreading negative comments about you. This scenario is not rare. Many have stumbled upon such revelations in unexpected places like overhearing a conversation in the restroom. The realization that someone you deemed a friend is capable of such duplicity can be jarring. The underlying reasons for this behavior can vary. It might be passed off as mere gossip or seen as harmless banter. However, the essence of the issue remains the same. When a person engages in speaking negatively about others, it reflects a lack of integrity and trustworthiness. If they can speak ill of someone else to you, they can just as easily do the same about you to others. This duplicity is a red flag in any relationship, signaling a person who cannot be trusted as a true friend. Reflecting on this, we are reminded of the profound words of Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt the First Lady of the United States and wife of the late President Franklin D. Roosevelt. She wisely stated, Great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, small minds discuss people. This quote encapsulates the essence of what it means to engage in meaningful and uplifting conversations. It serves as a reminder to strive for discussions that enrich our minds and souls, rather than indulging in the petty act of talking about others. Next, let's consider a story from ancient Stoicism. The philosopher Epictetus once encountered a young man who was notorious for his gossiping habits. Epictetus didn't reprimand him directly. Instead, he shared a parable about two travelers. One traveler focused on the beauty of the landscapes, the architecture of the cities, and the cultures of the people he met. The other, however, only noticed the dirt on the roads and the flaws in the people he encountered. In the end, while both traveled the same path, their experiences and what they took away from their journey were vastly different. This story serves as a metaphor for our approach to relationships and conversations. Do we focus on the positive, enriching aspects, or do we dwell on the negatives and flaws? In conclusion, as we navigate through our friendships and professional relationships, it's essential to be mindful of the conversations we engage in, and the people we trust. Avoiding the toxic behavior of speaking ill of others not only aligns with the stoic principles of integrity and trustworthiness, but also enriches our own lives and those around us. Let us strive to be the traveler 
who sees the beauty and goodness in our journey through life. Fostering relationships that are based on respect, kindness, and uplifting conversations. This approach will not only improve our own lives, but also positively impact our communities and society at large. The selfish type who only thinks of themselves. Next, we're going to explore a type of behavior that can poison our relationships, the selfishness that lurks in the shadows of some friendships. Picture this, a friend who orbits solely around their own world, blind to the needs and feelings of those around them. This is the toxic behavior to avoid in friendships, the self-centered individual who sees the world as a stage for their solo performance, a friend who is like an actor on a stage, always in the spotlight, never stepping down to share it with anyone else. They are the main character in every story, the sun in their own solar system, with everyone else merely revolving around them. This kind of friend prioritizes their own feelings, interests, needs, and comfort above all else. They rarely, if ever, ask about your day, your dreams, or your struggles. It's as if they're broadcasting on a one-way radio, never tuning in to the frequency of your life. Now, it's essential to acknowledge that self-care and self-preservation are vital. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. However, there's a stark difference between healthy self-love and toxic self-absorption. The latter is a one-way street leading to isolation. In a friendship, it's like having a conversation with a mirror. The reflection is always of one's self never of the other. If you find yourself in the company of such a person, it might feel like you're interacting with someone from a different world, a world where they are the sole inhabitant. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, another great Stoic philosopher, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. In this context, it means not mirroring their behavior, but choosing a different path. Let them return to their planet. For a world that revolves around a single axis is too narrow for two. In our stoic journey, we learn the importance of mutual respect, empathy, and the shared human experience. A true friend is like a fellow traveler on life's journey, walking beside you, sharing the load, and enjoying the scenery together. They are there in your moments of triumph and in times of need, just as you are there for them. This reciprocity is the foundation of a healthy, fulfilling friendship. So, as we continue to navigate the ebbs and flows of life, let's be mindful of the company we keep. Let's cherish those who enrich our lives and gently let go of those who diminish it. Remember, in the grand tapestry of life, each thread should add color and strength, not weaken the fabric of our shared humanity. As we strive to be better friends and better people, let's hold on to the wisdom of the Stoics, guiding us towards more meaningful and authentic connections. The Jealous Type In the intricate tapestry of human relationships, the jealous type emerges as a common thread, particularly prevalent in our society. These individuals harbor a deep-seated envy when they witness others basking in the glory of professional triumphs or savoring the sweetness of personal fulfillment. Their worldview is tinted with a lens of comparison, constantly measuring their fortunes or misfortunes against the backdrop of others' lives. This incessant comparison fuels a relentless drive to ensure that no one under any circumstance eclipses their achievements. The presence of such individuals in one's life can be likened to navigating through a treacherous storm. Their jealousy, often cloaked in benign intentions, can insidiously erode your self-worth and diminish the value of your endeavors. It's akin to walking alongside someone who, unbeknownst to you, is silently pulling the rug from under your feet. The danger lies not just in their overt actions, but in the subtle ways they can make you question your own accomplishments and worth. Moreover, this jealousy can sometimes propel them to cross the moral boundaries, albeit unintentionally. Their actions, driven by an unquenchable thirst for superiority, can lead them down a path where ethics become blurred and questionable decisions are justified. It's a slippery slope where the lines between right and wrong are often obscured by the fog of envy. As the great Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, Envy is the art of counting the other fellow's blessings instead of your own. This profound insight encapsulates the futility and self-destructive nature of jealousy. It's a reminder that in the pursuit of equanimity, 
one must focus on cultivating personal growth and contentment rather than fixating on the achievements of others. In our modern, interconnected world, where the successes of others are constantly showcased, it's imperative to foster a mindset that celebrates collective achievements rather than viewing them as a yardstick for personal inadequacy. The advice here is to cultivate self-awareness and resilience. Recognize the signs of jealousy, both in others and within yourself, and consciously steer away from its toxic grasp. Embrace a philosophy of self-improvement and gratitude, focusing on your journey and milestones, rather than getting entangled in the web of comparison. In conclusion, navigating friendships with the jealous type requires vigilance, understanding, and a firm grounding in one's own values and achievements. It's about recognizing the toxic undercurrents of envy and choosing to rise above them, guided by the principles of stoicism and a commitment to personal integrity and growth. The type who constantly complains about poverty and misfortune appearing pitiable. This behavior, akin to a river's bend that is ever-present but never progressing, reflects a stagnation in character and outlook. Life, in its ebb and flow, inevitably brings moments of hardship and need where we lean on others for support. This is a natural and healthy aspect of human relationships. However, there exists a distinct difference between seeking support during tough times and incessantly complaining about one's misfortunes without any effort to remedy them. The latter is a trait of a dependent and untrustworthy individual, often seeking to exploit the compassion of authors. They are like actors on a stage, performing a tragedy to elicit sympathy, yet unwilling to step down and change their script. It's crucial to recognize that while empathy is a virtue, it should not lead us into a trap of unwarranted guilt or a sense of obligation towards those who refuse to help themselves. Stoicism teaches us the importance of discernment in our relationships. As Marcus Aurelius wisely stated, it is not events that disturb people, it is their judgments concerning them. When we encounter friends who constantly dwell in a state of complaint, it is our judgment that can either entangle us in their narrative or help us maintain a healthy distance. Now consider the story of the farmer and the boulder. A farmer once came across a large boulder in his field. Every day he would lament its presence, blaming it for his poor crops. Yet he never attempted to remove it. His neighbor, on the other hand, faced with a similar obstacle, chose to exert effort to remove the boulder and subsequently enjoyed a bountiful harvest. This allegory highlights the stark contrast between passivity in the face of challenges and proactive problem solving. In applying this to our friendships, it's essential to encourage and support friends who face difficulties, but also to recognize when our assistance is fostering dependency rather than empowerment. A true friend does not merely dwell in shared misery, but inspires and motivates towards positive change. In conclusion, while it is noble to aid friends in need, it is equally important to discern when our help is genuinely beneficial. We must remember that each individual is responsible for their journey, and while we can offer support, we cannot walk their path for them. As Stoics, we strive to balance compassion with wisdom, understanding that true friendship involves not just empathy, but also the encouragement of self-reliance and growth. This lesson, deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy, serves as a guide for us to cultivate healthier, more empowering relationships. The Moody Type with Unpredictable Temperaments In our journey through life, we often encounter friends who, like the changing tides, are unpredictable and moody. This is the seventh toxic behavior to avoid in friendships, dealing with those who cannot master their emotions. A friend whose temper flares like a sudden storm, directing their anger towards you, not because you are the root of their troubles, but simply because you are within reach. It's as if, in their moment of rage, you become an unintended target, bearing the brunt of emotions that aren't yours to carry. But the storm doesn't end there. Once their anger subsides, they skillfully shift the narrative, portraying themselves as the victim. This cycle, a whirlwind of anger and manipulation, repeats over and over. While they may not cause physical harm, the emotional toll is undeniable. Your spirit gets bruised, your peace disturbed, 
You find yourself constantly on edge, unable to focus on your work or personal life as you become an unwilling receptacle for their first assurance. It's essential to remember that you are deserving of respect and kindness. Marcus Aurelius, a revered Stoic philosopher, once said, The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. In this context, it means not allowing yourself to be swayed by the emotional turmoil of others, to maintain your tranquility and not mirror their harmful behaviors. In the face of such challenges, it's crucial to set boundaries. Protecting your emotional well-being isn't just a right, it's a responsibility. It's about recognizing that while you can offer support, you are not a vessel for others' unchecked emotions. True friendship should be a source of support and joy, not a perpetual cycle of emotional upheaval. Navigating these waters requires wisdom and patience. It's about understanding that while we cannot control others' actions, we can control our response. As Epictetus, another Stoic sage, wisely stated, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. In friendships marred by moodiness and unpredictability, our response can be one of compassion from a distance, coupled with a firm stance on what behaviors we accept in our lives. In conclusion, as you tread the path of life surrounded by friends of various temperaments, Remember to cherish those who bring positivity and understanding into your life. Embrace the friendships that uplift you, and be wary of those that drain your emotional reserves. After all, in the grand tapestry of life, each person we choose to keep close should add color and texture, not darkness and discord. Remember, you always deserve good things and people who appreciate you, and in the realm of friendships, quality far outweighs. Quantity. The negative pessimistic type as if tomorrow is the end of the world. This perspective is crucial in understanding how our attitudes and companions influence our journey through life's inevitable challenges, including work, family, and social relationships. Life as we know it is replete with trials and tribulations. It's not the presence of these challenges that defines us, but rather our reaction to them. Stoic philosophy deeply rooted in the art of resilience, teaches us the importance of maintaining a positive outlook. As Marcus Aurelius, a renowned Stoic philosopher, once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This quote underscores the Stoic belief in focusing on what we can control, our attitudes and responses. When we encounter individuals who perpetually embody sadness, skepticism and fear, who dare not venture beyond their comfort zone, their presence can be draining. They often paint the world in shades of gray, stripping away the vibrancy of life. Their constant fear and hesitation can be contagious, leading us to adopt a similar outlook. This is where the wisdom of Stoicism becomes particularly relevant. Stoicism teaches us to be mindful of our associations and their impact on our mental state. It encourages us to seek out those who uplift us, rather than those who drag us into a pit of pessimism. In the modern world where stress and uncertainty are often the norms, it's easy to fall into the trap of negativity. However, it's essential to remember that our perception shapes our reality. By surrounding ourselves with positive influences and adopting a stoic mindset, we can navigate life's challenges with greater ease and resilience. We must be vigilant in recognizing when a friend's negativity begins to seep into our own thoughts and actions. If their nature is inherently pessimistic, spending too much time with them might risk turning us into a mirror image of their gloom. In conclusion, it's vital to approach friendships with discernment, especially when dealing with individuals who exhibit a consistently negative and pessimistic outlook. Embracing the Stoic philosophy of focusing on what we can control, our attitudes and reactions, can serve as a guiding light. By doing so, we not only preserve our inner peace, but also contribute positively to the lives of those around us. Remember, the company we keep can significantly influence our perspective on life and ultimately our happiness and well-being. The Deceitful Type In our journey through life, we often encounter various types of individuals each with their own unique traits and behaviors. Among these, 
there are some whose actions and attitudes can be detrimental to the fabric of friendship. One such type is the deceitful individual. Deceit, a behavior deeply ingrained in some, is not merely about occasional lies or mistakes, which are human nature, but rather a consistent pattern of dishonesty, used as a tool for personal gain. These individuals often weave intricate webs of falsehoods not out of necessity, but as a habitual response to various situations, driven by their own self-serving motives. The impact of deceit on friendships is profound. Trust, the cornerstone of any meaningful relationship, is eroded by lies and deception. When trust is compromised, the foundation of the friendship begins to crumble, leaving behind a hollow shell of what once might have been a deep, and meaningful connection. Consider the story of the boy who cried wolf, a classic tale that illustrates the consequences of habitual lying. The boy, who repeatedly deceived the villagers into believing a wolf was attacking his flock, found himself helpless when the wolf actually appeared. His previous lies led to a loss of trust, and when he truly needed assistance, he was left alone to face the consequences. This allegory mirrors the fate of deceitful individuals in friendships. Over time, their lies create a barrier of skepticism and disbelief, and when they are in genuine need of support or understanding, they might find themselves isolated, their pleas for help falling on deaf ears. In the realm of Stoicism, the emphasis is on personal integrity and living a life of virtue. Stoic philosophy teaches us the value of honesty and the importance of maintaining ethical standards in all aspects of life, including our relationships. Marcus Aurelius, a prominent Stoic philosopher, once said, If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. This simple yet powerful statement encapsulates the Stoic approach to honesty and integrity. For those navigating the path of Stoicism, it becomes essential to recognize and distance oneself from toxic behaviors, such as deceit. While it is important to offer compassion and understanding, it is equally vital to protect oneself from the negative influences of those who habitually lie and deceive. In doing so, we not only preserve our own integrity, but also foster an environment where genuine, trustworthy relationships can flourish. In conclusion, the lesson here is clear. Value honesty and integrity in your friendships. Be wary of those who habitually lie, as their deceit can erode the very essence of trust that binds a friendship. As Stoics, we strive to surround ourselves with individuals who reflect the virtues we cherish, creating a circle of friends that uplifts, supports, and enriches our lives. Remember, in the pursuit of a virtuous life, the company we keep plays a pivotal role in shaping our character and our journey. The lazy type who always shifts work onto others. This behavior is not uncommon in various settings, including the workplace. Such individuals are characterized by their reluctance to shoulder their fair share of work, often finding ways to offload their tasks onto their colleagues. Yet when it comes time to present results, they audaciously claim credit, basking in the accolades that rightfully belong to others. In the realm of Stoicism, this behavior is antithetical to the virtues of justice and integrity. Stoic philosophy, as taught by the likes of Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, emphasizes the importance of personal responsibility and fairness in all our dealings. Seneca once said, We should every night call ourselves to an account. What infirmity have I mastered today? What passions opposed? What temptation resisted? What virtue acquired. This introspection encourages us to reflect on our actions and strive for personal improvement rather than exploiting others for personal gain. When encountering such individuals, it is crucial to adopt a stance of assertive clarity. Stoicism teaches us the value of direct and honest communication. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, advised, If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. In line with this, it is essential to communicate your unwillingness to enable such behavior. This does not mean confrontation, but rather a calm and reasoned expression of your boundaries. Stoicism does not advocate for passivity. Instead, it encourages us to stand firm in our principles while maintaining our composure. 
It's important to recognize that being overly considerate or accommodating in such situations can lead to exploitation. Stoicism teaches us the value of self-respect and the importance of not being swayed by external circumstances or the actions of others. Epictetus, another prominent Stoic philosopher, once stated, We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This implies the importance of being observant and understanding the true nature of those around us. By doing so, we can make informed decisions about how to interact with them, ensuring that we do not become unwitting enablers of their toxic behavior. In summary, dealing with the lazy type who shifts work onto others requires a balanced approach, guided by stoic principles. It involves being assertive and setting boundaries, maintaining integrity, and not allowing oneself to be exploited. By doing so, we not only protect our well-being but also uphold the stoic virtues of justice, integrity, and personal responsibility. Remember, in the journey of life, especially in the context of friendships and professional relationships, it is vital to surround ourselves with individuals who reflect the values we cherish and aspire to uphold. The Drama Magnet In our journey through life, we often encounter various types of individuals, each with their unique traits and challenges. Among them is a particularly draining archetype, the drama magnet. This person seems perpetually entangled in a web of crises, conflicts, or controversies. Like a powerful whirlpool, they possess an unsettling knack for drawing others into their vortex of chaos. At first, you might be drawn to the drama magnet's seemingly vibrant energy, mistaking it for passion or excitement. However, it soon becomes apparent that being in their orbit is akin to navigating a ship through a relentless storm, both exhausting and perilous. The real challenge with these individuals lies in the way their emergencies feel contagious, almost as if their problems become your own. Their chaos has a way of spreading, ensnaring you in conflicts that were never yours to begin with. Let's consider a specific scenario to illustrate this point. Imagine a friend in your social circle, let's call her Sarah, who is frequently embroiled in conflicts with others. Recently, Sarah found herself in a heated argument over an issue within the group, escalating into a significant rift. Her frustration was palpable, often criticizing and complaining about other members, clearly dissatisfied with anyone who disagreed with her viewpoint. In such situations, you might feel the pressure and tension mounting, especially as these conflicts become central to group interactions. Despite attempts at mediating or offering advice like trying to calm the stormy seas, you find no resolution, nor any change in Sarah's perspective. Here, Stoic principles offer a beacon of guidance. One effective technique is reflective listening. Instead of engaging in the conflict or attempting to sway Sarah, simply mirror her sentiments in a non-judgmental way. For instance, when Sarah expresses frustration over disagreements, respond with, so you feel frustrated with their disagreement, right? This approach allows you to acknowledge her feelings without fueling the fire of the argument. However, if the situation persists and participating in the group no longer aligns with your peace of mind and goals, consider becoming selectively unavailable. This might mean distancing yourself from the group or seeking relationships and activities more in tune with your state of mind. Stoicism teaches us to value our time and sometimes that entails being unavailable for others' perpetual crises. Create periods of focused solitude, turning off your phone and dedicating time to work or personal development, making it clear that you're not to be disturbed during these times. To echo the words of Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This wisdom is particularly relevant when dealing with drama magnets. Rather than being consumed by worry over the next crisis, focus on the present moment, where your control leads. Embrace your life, undisturbed by the turmoil of others. Strive to navigate your ship calmly, steering clear of the whirlpools that threaten your journey towards personal growth and serenity. In essence, our interactions with drama magnets test our resilience and ability to maintain inner peace. By employing stoic practices like reflective listening and selective unavailability, we can navigate these turbulent relationships while preserving our tranquility. Remember, 
The goal is not to change others, but to maintain our own course towards a life of contentment and balance. The Time Vampire Your daily life is an intricately woven tapestry, where each thread represents a task or commitment, contributing to the overall beauty and balance of your existence. However, there lurks a disruptive force akin to a time vampire that threatens to unravel this fabric, distorting the harmony of your life's design. Time vampires are those who incessantly demand your time and attention, often offering little of value in return. Picture a friend who frequently engages you in lengthy, aimless conversations, leaving you feeling depleted and your schedule in disarray, or a colleague whose constant trivial interruptions derail your productivity, causing missed deadlines. These time vampires don't merely consume your time, they erode your focus, productivity, and inner peace. To counteract the influence of time vampires, it's imperative to establish firm boundaries, communicate your availability, and limits with clarity and politeness. Inform them of when you are open for calls or meetings and when you require focused, undisturbed work time. Encourage them to honor your schedule, just as you respect theirs. Another tactic is to steer their demands towards more efficient communication methods. If a friend is prone to long directionless phone calls, propose shifting to brief, focused text messages or emails for quick updates or queries. This approach allows you to reclaim your time and prevent it from being drained away. Delving deeper into the example of a friend who indulges in protracted phone calls, we can glean insights into effectively managing our time and maintaining efficiency in our daily lives. Suggesting a transition to concise text messages or emails as a more efficient communication method can be transformative. This change not only conserves time but also fosters a more convenient communication environment for both parties. By opting for text or email, you gain control over when you engage, freeing yourself from the constraints of long, unscheduled calls. You can peruse and respond to messages at your leisure, ensuring that your time is respected. Moreover, text or email communication can lead to more impactful and efficient exchanges. By distilling your thoughts into succinct, clear messages, you aid the recipient in understanding and responding swiftly. This approach optimizes information exchange and curtails the time lost in rambling conversations. Additionally, this mode of communication is conducive to addressing and resolving specific issues. It allows for a focus on essential questions and requests, enabling the recipient to provide precise responses without the need for extended dialogue. This strategy not only maximizes time efficiency for both parties, but also ensures that tasks are executed more effectively. By adopting this approach, you exercise control over your time and uphold efficiency in your daily life proposing an improvement in communication that is both diplomatic and rational. You create a positive and convenient environment for yourself and your contacts. In the realm of Stoic philosophy, there is an emphasis on discerning what lies within our control and what does not. Time vampires attempt to dominate your schedule and attention, but you have the power to assert your autonomy by setting boundaries and managing your time with intention. Heed the words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca. It is not that we have a short space of time, but that we waste much of it. Surrounding yourself with individuals who uplift you and resonate with Stoic principles is vital for your advancement in Stoic philosophy and personal growth. As we conclude today's exploration of 12 toxic behaviors to avoid in friendships on Stoic in your life, we've journeyed through a landscape rich with insights and wisdom. From understanding the nuances of control and criticism in friendships to recognizing the subtle signs of jealousy and deceit, we've delved deep into the complexities of human relationships. Each point we've discussed serves as a beacon, guiding us towards healthier, more fulfilling connections. Remember, the essence of Stoicism lies in discernment, resilience, and the pursuit of virtue in our daily lives. By applying these principles to our friendships, we not only enrich our own lives but also contribute positively to those around us. As we part ways today, I invite you to reflect on these lessons and consider how they resonate with your personal experiences. Which of these behaviors have you encountered in your friendships? 
How have you navigated these challenges and what insights have you gained? I encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your journey, your insights, are invaluable to our community here at Stoic In Your Life. Let's continue to learn from each other to grow together in our understanding and application of Stoic principles. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe to Stoic In Your Life. Turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss our upcoming videos, where we'll continue to explore the profound wisdom of Stoicism and its application in our modern world. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, remember, in the tapestry of life, we weave our own story one thread at a time. Let's make each thread count. Stay stoic, stay strong, and keep thriving in your life's journey.